Hey, what's up, guys? Back to the action, of course. We got more round one singles coming up for you guys. Of course, we're here at Genesis 7, the premier West Coast tournament. How you doing, Eve? I am doing extremely well, having a good time. You already know, man. Of course, you know, of course. As you said, the premier um, West Coast tournament, honestly, one of the just the premier tournaments in general for oh, yeah. Smash Bros. Like, if you just uh, look at all the tournaments, like, throughout the year. Yep, and its totality throughout multiple uh, iterations of Smash. Like, they've always found a home at Genesis, and they've always been... Uh, they've always been doing right. You know, there's a reason that this is on uh, year number seven of this prestigious event. So, yeah, yeah. obviously, a lot of good history and lineage behind it. So, let's go ahead and head over to game number one between Sean and Pandarian. Love seeing Pandarian compete. I feel like Pandarian is, uh, just to me, you know, I feel like Pandarian is one of those players, it feels like more often than not, he could be on the cusp of greatness. Yeah. He just has to find, I don't know what's missing. He's maybe so close. Just, maybe it's just that clutch, that clutch gene when it comes to like the harder players. But man, I've seen this kid compete with the best. He can definitely throw down. Yeah, Very maybe, talented individual. Maybe trainers holding him back. You know what I mean? Yeah, tweet, drop yeah, trainer for a reason. You didn't have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe you know what? I'm not mad at you for keeping it real. But I, I do think this matchup. Uh, I won't say trainer wins, but once trainer, like especially particularly Ivysaur, puts. Snake in disadvantage, it can be really rough because Snake usually wants to do that double jump cypher, right? Yeah. But is that really a super great option against Ivysaur? Oh, my. Pandarian with the little two steps into the forest, man. Bro was straight moving. Sean. Yeah. Wow. And I, I believe this is Sean from uh, NorCal. Obviously, there's a lot of Sean's, a very yeah, common yeah. name. But I saw Mio go up to the stage and talking to someone. So, And I, um, I know of a Sean in NorCal. Yeah, I haven't seen, I haven't seen Sean compete in a while. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I haven't seen Sean come out with anything in a while. But, but he's going uh, back in the Brawl yeah, days. Yeah, in his heyday, yeah, he was quite talented. So, you know, you mentioned back in the Brawl days. Well, I'll tell you what. Who was missing from Smash 4? Snake. Who yeah. was in Brawl? Snake. Who's yeah. back in Ultimate? Snake. It makes sense, baby. Yeah. Follow um, storylines. A lot of, like, Snake players coming from Brawl really coming back into this game because they got their main back. Not going to fall for that forward Smash, though. No. Uh, whip on the big one. Ooh, that's... Oh, he waited for the switch, but just didn't get the turnaround on that up tilt. That would have been great damage, but nonetheless, racking it up and straight to the Ivysaur. That's one thing I noticed. Um, like, comparatively, like, Tweaks, Squirtle, like, it just doesn't feel like a lot of people are up to par with, like, the Squirtle game, you know what I mean? I feel like uh, even like Tweak and Leffen, they have really strong Squirtles, but some of the other trainers, I feel like that's particularly where they're lacking. And that's, and that's unfortunate because, you know, Squirtle is by far the best one. Of the three. Yeah, yeah, and he can't make it back. Yeah, that's oh, going to wow. be the Gimp. And Sean, what a turnaround on the second stock. Can, yeah, I don't think you're going to get the stock with the Squirtle there. Going to go right to the Ivysaur. Ooh, trying to fish for that guy. The one thing about Ivysaur, uh, obviously can blow you up when once they get a hit. But sometimes it's hard for Ivysaur to get that hit. I think Ivysaur ha actually has the weakest neutral of all three Pokemon. Also, I'm, you know, I'm not uh, particularly sold on his grab either. Oh, like, no, Ivy's, this, Ivy's grab, like, yeah, like you, you probably think to yourself, oh, I mean, he's got the vines, bro, but. Nah, yeah, you, fine, want, you want a regular grab with that. The vines ain't reaching nothing, bro. Man, and right now, Pandarian just can't seem to find an, a find an answer. And this is, uh, this is another West Coast battle. It's not NorCal, SoCal, but it's uh, Washington versus NorCal. So, see, and already, man, Sean repping NorCal really well. Ooh, trying to get that drop zone with the C4. Not going to quite connect, but we've seen Ivysaur and what Ivysaur can do can turn games around yeah. and right now getting those trades kind of in favor of Pandarian uh, in a sense but like now you're in kill percent yeah, exactly bro. that's what makes this thing, whole thing so scary like you're a kill percent you kind of have to navigate through this minefield that Sean has been able to you know put up you gotta withstand oh, it oh my goodness I thought that actually might have done it if it was free badge it might have <laughs> I didn't want to oh, say oh he the got jump. him bro wow Pandarian what an insane rally on his end and that just goes to show you man Mental toughness down the stretch. Yep. Because he was, yeesh, he was one up tilt, one forward tilt by the ledge away from just death. And honestly, you got to have that mental fortitude to raise relief seven times in a row like that. You know what? And I respect it. By no means am I throwing any shade. No, like, because no. he had the grenades and all, like, Sean was setting up a lot of the grenades and Pandarian's like, okay, cool. I'm going to keep pressuring you yep. with these raise leaves. They blow up the grenades as well. And I'm going to put you in a position where I'm pressuring you even though you have the lead. And that's really what kind of got him into that situation, got that last stretch of 50%, and then he was able to close it out with that up air, just calling out the jump. It's wonderfully played by Pandarian. It's full confidence. You can just tell, this way he played, you know, Korean is his confidence never faltered at all. 
Ooh, wow, what a falling up air. Whew, so much pressure. He's got to land, trying to catch it with that grab. But man, look at all this damage. He didn't get the stock, but geez, man. Ooh, the spacing on that forward air looking kind of nice, too. And there he is playing really well. Oh. Man. And you know what? It, it, it's hard to come into that game, too, when, when you had it. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, dang, my oh, God, bro. The, 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 official, the thing that's so good about that is you're just making the call like, okay, I'm going to put you in such an uncomfortable spot that if I just make this one read, you're just dead, bro. Yeah. You're actually just dead. And the pullback coming in from that move, and that move is just huge. It covers so much area, right? Yep. Ivysaur, like, launches forward. So now, working on that extra credit, we've got the double Razor Leaf coming on the stage, and Pandarian is big chilling. He does not have to commit. He's got the Razor Leafs on deck, trying to get that reset, but here comes here comes Sean. Ooh, wow, great. Okay, I was going to say he maneuvered around that Nikita perfectly, but, you know, you're able to uh, manipulate that and bring it back. But nonetheless, the stock remaining intact for Pandarian, and now the big boy Charizard coming like out to play. Yeah, that flamethrower was so great. He got it kind of like at max range, and then even if he grenaded in that situation, it just blows it up. Oh, oh, the back air? He waits for the air dodge, but he doesn't pull the trigger. Maybe he thought he was just going to drift more to the right or something of the sorts, but man, he had a really good situation. But now, finally, Sean evening it up, coming into the second stock. Grabs a grenade, throws it right back up at him, and catching him again with these up airs. I feel like almost the MVP for Pandarian. Like these IV up airs, these IV forward smashes, they've been doing so much work for him. Oh, now, oh look what at that. a parry I mean, punish. I think you couldn't have called that at a more perfect time, bro. Dude, that was clean. He parried into, like, just drop through the ledge or drop through the platform up air, and he just did, like, a 55% combo. Again, he does it again. Bro, it's bread and butter for him right now. Okay, he you know a trainer's feeling himself when he goes for uh, up smash. Up smash, yeah. He's yeah, like, it's like calm, making, calm down. I'm making the hard calls I'm right going to throw out the, the, the bad up air on the ground. <laughs> oh, man. Right now, Sean just, oh, he just has no That's, answer. He has uh, no answer. This is dead. Oh, what? No down air? Oh, oh I he, guess, didn't, he didn't need it. I guess he yeah, didn't need it. Uh, I thought, too, when he clipped him with that razor leaf, I was like, oh, he's got the setup. It's done. Right, because the jump was gone. Yeah, right? I was well, like, it's done. It's done. Right. But either way, uh, either way, the job gets handled. So well done, Pandarian. Just an absolute monster in that exchange. Wow. Especially the comeback he pulled in game one. Yeah, and I, I honestly feel like it was that comeback that set him up for just a straight 2-0 victory. And, and that's what you you got to have that clutch yeah. to be able to do that. And you got to have the mental fortitude to not let that get to you at the same time, right? Like, Sean was playing so good game one. He was. You know? You know, comebacks happen, but it just felt like Pandarian just hogged all the momentum going into game two and just really, like, that first stock opener was like, damn. <laughs> it's tough because sometimes when you let when you let that victory get away from you and you see that kind of your percent just kind of rising and rising and getting closer and closer to more of an even playing field, you're like, dang, you know, I just had, like, a pretty concise, you know, path to victory and I just let it slip away and you can't really recover from that. You're just, like, you're in your own head before the match is even over. Pandarian, meanwhile, he's just playing with house money. Like, look, I'm at 136. I got nothing to lose. I'm going to just play my game. Right. And this game just happened to be a little bit better. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, sometimes those those certain hits, they take more than a stock. You yeah. know, sometimes they hit that mental, too. You know? right. And, I mean, that that's the thing about just competition in general. Like, you look through sports or esports or just anything competitive. It's A lot of it is about the mental game, too. Of course, of course there's the execution on the spot, too. But there's that mental war going on at the same time. Not about it, man. You don't want to end up. Antonio Brown and yourself. I'll leave it at that. But guys, Damn. it's been an absolute pleasure to commentate for you. You know, me and my me and my man Korean. <laughs> we'll be back on uh, other streams throughout the day. You know what I'm saying? So keep it locked. More G7 action on the way.